Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my real room this time around, although I will be here only for about a week. In fact, less than this, about five days before I head to Paris. Um, but in the meantime, Humphrey's here and uh, we're going to be talking about the TI code, or rather I should say maybe the absence of code, uh, you know, following my series on the I energy consciousness, trying to explore more by the idea that, uh, you know, the various functions of the INFJ tend to bring forward, uh, in some cases, a codification of experience, um, which is necessary to a degree, but, and therefore whose complete absence could be dangerous, but whose excess could also be detrimental. Uh, and I want to continue with exploring like uh, the lower functions in their stack, and uh, hopefully we'll be saying some interesting things about TI today. Before I move on, just remember that uh, you can get my book on the INFJ, The Ecstatic Soul. It's the most in-depth investigation of the INFJ that you'll find online. So if you're interested in getting this book for less than $10, available at links below, both paperback and ebook. Get, get a hold of this if you haven't have got it yet. Have a look at the reviews. Uh, more fictional work, The Infinite Castle has been... Uh, Good to people purchasing it recently, which is great. Uh, so if you're into existentialism, Dostoevsky, Kafka, Camus, and that kind of stuff, modernism as well. But also apparently, you know, uh, it seems to be clearly written by an INFJ and the, the protagonist will be an alienated INFJ. So if you want to explore an INFJ from a fictional viewpoint, that is to get less than $10 as well, really supports me. And you can also support me on Patreon, link is below. Always really, really useful. And as you know, on Patreon, there's a growing community there. Anywhere from $3 helps massively. Okay. So what can we say about, about the TI code? If we are at a stage where uh, we've already, you know, we've already um, indicated that there's a tendency among energies to codify their NI, so the, if you like, the insights of their prescience. There's a tendency in collaboration with this to codify their uh, FE judgments and FE morals. Um, we've also mentioned how, uh, on the one hand, it is important to be able to codify to a degree because otherwise would be, our judgments would be formless and completely susceptible to influence by others. We do want to have our own operative framework that we develop for ourselves. However, you know, the more we codify, the more we take the risk of becoming rigid. And by becoming rigid, we're less open to the contributions of others, and um, which we see as a threat. The, the code gives you a way of instantly saying, okay, this fits, this doesn't fit, so therefore you can, you know, not consider someone's words or ignore them, or in more advanced cases, more extreme cases, banish them, as, as this other interpretation of the door slam. The the paradox is this, uh, at least the, as a way, uh, you know, as far as I can see it, um, is that when you think about it, the, the T functions, whether they be TE or TI, these are the functions that we assume will be linked to a kind of coding, right, to make things systematic. Maybe a more sort of external infrastructural coding in the case of TE and a more internal uh, sort of definitional coding in the, in the sense of TI. Uh, but therefore, you know, nevertheless, some kind of coding to create rel reliable, repeatable, pattern categories that we, we can come back to. Okay. It seems to be a T thing where like a feeling is not really involved. And I certainly would not dare to claim that this kind of coding doesn't happen in the case of um, types with a TI high enough in their stack, such as the NTP and INTP, for instance, but other ones as well, ISTP, ESTP. Um, but I think paradoxically, like I said, that in the case of the INFJ, that doesn't actually happen. Um, of course, INFJs can uh, have very well-developed TI and it, it, it can show. Um, and it shows in a variety of different circumstances. If you take the philosopher Wittgenstein, you know, it's always the, the example that we want to use. Evidently, he had very, very, very developed TI, uh, despite being INFJ or, you know, whilst he was an INFJ uh, by most accounts at least in this system. So um, TI can be powerful in the case of the INFJ, but I don't think it codifies. And in fact, that is mostly a strength if it's harnessed properly, but it can also be a hindrance uh, in relation to the codification of the NI function. Um, because essentially an important point 
that I want to make is that when a lot of people, you know, are talking about um, NITI looping, for instance, when an INFJ is really prioritizing the inferior function and how they operate in the world psychologically, what they activate, what they value, and so on and so forth. They tend to think that, you know, you have NI that produces the perceptions, and then you have TI that provides the analysis, and then it feeds it back to the inner perceptions, and then further analysis, and then feeds it back to the inner perceptions and further analysis. Um, so it creates like this kind of withdrawn, disconnected person that is locked inside their introverted world, where, you know, there's like production of images, interpretation, production of images, interpretation, so on. Solipsistic individuals and, and, and stuff like that. However, um, at the same time, there is something that I've noticed in the community at times, uh, a tendency to not view the NITI looping phenomenon completely negatively is to say, well, okay, like it can make me socially withdrawn. If you like, in terms of the social aspects, in terms of the quality of life aspect, in terms of being a social being in the world, uh, it is acknowledged by pretty much everyone that NITI looping is not good, but almost for some people, it seems like, I don't want to say like a drug, but something that maybe has analogous uh, properties to a drug that is to say that, and I, you know, some INFJs will say, are uh, like, I know it's not good for me, but sometimes NITI looping is, it's just my world. It's just, I'm in there. And yes, the risk is that I become socially withdrawn, but it's something that I like to retreat to collect myself, maybe to get some new insights. And then, you know, the only risk is it might be hard to get back out. But while, while I'm there, I actually feel good, right? So, so it has a link to the idea that alienation is, is also a form of survival for the INFG, as, as, as uh, paradoxical as that may sound. It's a, it's a survival strategy. And, you know, you can you can read more about that in, in the ecstatic soul. Like alienated INFJ is a type of INFJ that can be quite operational in the world. Although I don't think it's the, you know, the ideal type, it certainly is the case. But in the case of an ITI looping, the way that I would look at it is to say a lot of the time when you think TI is involved in analysis of your inner perceptions, in fact, what you're looking at is NI's own coding of its perceptions, which it does mostly by itself. And leaving TI in a situation where it actually is depleted it doesn't actually um, enjoy full and analytical capacity. And is more so there to just validate whatever form of coding NI is doing. In other words, it's presented with something that is already structured into a kind of code and TI, tertiary TI looping is kind of subservient to NI. This is something that needs to be understood is that if you're gonna loop your first and third functions, the dominant function is obviously going to be the you know the dominant one, and the one that is going to uh, assert its um, its will, if you like, if I can put it this way, uh, over the, the tertiary function. And so TI is kind of the handmaid of, of NI in this case. And the problem with that is that when TI is in the position of being the high hand, a handmaid of of NI, well, it's, it's not actually given the means to do what TI does best. And what TI does best is to take things completely neutrally, not uh, signify in the first place any particular allegiances and, um, you know, um, deliver its verdicts impartially, as impartially as possible. The problem is when NI is dominant, TI is actually sort of biased and skewed in some way and is almost programmed to confirm whatever coding NI does, which is why when you encounter some of these, like, sometimes smart but rigid INFJs, well, yeah, often they do loop NI and TI, uh, and you can see that live, you can see that in action, but you'll notice that they don't actually question too much of what they're about. Uh, if, if not, they would not be so rigid. But if the function of TI is to question and analyze and make more rigorous, of course, some of their NI insights, some of their NI propositions would be called into question and would stand in need of further you know, uh, either further verification or further delineation, clarification. But somehow, no, everything, you know, the NI coding seems to be complete and the INFJ is convinced that this is fine, you know. Um, and then here we brought back to the simple reality that TI is ultimately a function of judgment and that it works in pair with FE. So you get to the paradoxical situation where for TI to be at its, at its, at its most blossoming 
for TI to have its fullest potential actuated for an INFJ, you really need to engage FE. It goes together. FE is the key to a lot of things for the INFJ becoming fully individuated, if you want to put it that way, or fully integrated. It gives you access to SE because if you FE with other people, inevitably you'll be led to using SE. But it also allows you to sharpen your TI by not restricting it to being the handmaiden of NI and its demands on getting its coding confirmed. So if that is true, then we get to a conclusion that is kind of could be considered radical by some people, which is that not only is NITI looping the cause of a lot of social withdrawal and alienation, so it brings you know negative results based on that alone, but on top of that, the insights for NI that it facilitates are actually not even that great, and the insights of NI would be better richer, more nuanced and layered and more productive if, and fertile, if FE was heavily engaged. Um, because NITI looping is a kind of, you know, it runs on like, it's, it's kind of a wheel turning in the mud, you know, it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and, and, and crucially, NI is not provided with the essential real questioning of TI that it ought to have if TI was not just recruited to confirm whatever NI is saying. I've observed that so much with people who NITI loop that I really think at this stage, something that ultimately really just seems to make sense. It's like, of course, FE should be, be engaged as much as possible. Of course, that's the healthiest way to approach for an INFJ. FE is your auxiliary function. So you're not gonna get away from uh, using FE if you do wanna be a complete INFJ, a full INFJ in this sense, including uh, an INFJ that has really solid, profound NI insights. You know, there's no way around it. So, in some sense, TI isn't a coding function. It's not a coding function for for the INFJ in any case. Uh, when it's made subservient, subservient to NI in NITI looping, but even when FE is involved, TI doesn't really code. In the case of the INFJ, TI has a, a lot of flexibility. You know, which is why it's, it's always a, such a shame when it's not given the means to express itself when someone is looping a lot. Because uh, TI has the ability with an INFJ to actually, um, if you like, it doesn't systematize as much as it would in the case of like uh, INTPs or ESTPs or something like that. It doesn't systematize as much. It's much more flexible to certain situations as provided with the, either the insights of inner perceptions and I or, you know, more external insights coming from FE and SE. Uh, which usually means that logicians who are INFJ tend to be quite heterodox and original. Philosophers who are INFJs tend to use TI in a way that always is seeking like new ways of looking at things. Whereas you might think that if TI was so coded and so dominant and was always insisting on systematizing everything from the very start, this would probably, if you like, uh, make, it probably would deaden the potential of coming across with wildly original ideas. But the flexibility of, of, of uh, the INFJ's TI function allows the INFJ to not necessarily be the most philo systematic philosopher ever, like you will never find an INFJ who's that systematic, but to come up with really creative insights that are informed by TI just enough that it's clarified and it sees things that, uh, you know, deserve to be looked at, but it doesn't always order it. You need to be completely dry and systematic, you know? There's that flexibility, but for that full potential to be e exploited, you know, FE needs to be engaged and SE as well. So let me know in the comment what you thought about this video about TI, uh, TI coding or non-coding. I look forward to your thoughts. Hopefully that wasn't too abstract or theoretical because I know these videos are a little bit uh, and I will see you very soon, guys. All right. Take care. Don't forget you can support me on Patreon. Bye bye.